lemon made up resin. A play giant video review. Sit back and enjoy the show. Hey there, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guide and Review. In this week's episode, we'll be checking out Tearaway Thomas, developed and published by Global Software in 1992. So let's waste no more time, let's press that fire button and check this game out. The aim of Tearaway Thomas is to collect crystals, and it gives us a heads up right from the start of the number of crystals on that level. All we have to do is to make our way all the way from the start to the exit, picking up all the requirements crystals on the way, and as soon as we've done that, the exit will open and we can jump on in there. When we collect more crystals of that quota, they will be doubled and will give us double points. So the points really do rack up in this game, and as you can see, these early levels really do disappear, just like the character, pretty darn quickly. By pressing the fire button, we can do an amazing loop the loop jump, almost like Sonic the Hedgehog. In fact, the creators of this game made no attempt to hide the fact that this was supposed to be Sonic the Hedgehog on the Amiga. But I think Zool was a little more like Sonic, and this fails in comparison. But you can see the graphics are Fairly well done, you can see a great gradient effect in the background, the enemies are cartoony and nicely drawn, and you may be surprised that this was the graphics artist's first and only game on the Amiga, and even the coder and even the musician, this was their only game on the Amiga, so I think they did a magnificent job. You can see the scrolling is very smooth, and even though our character does move at a tremendous rate, Everything is very smooth and it never slows down for a second. The player can hesitate there and wait to press the fire button, maybe grab some breath before they start the level, and then because we have a tight time limit, usually we don't have time to hang around. When we collide with those enemies, that will not lose time, except for the fact that we'll crash to the ground and we'll have to sit there for at least a second before we rise to our feet and start running all over again. So. The aim of the game is simple enough, usually collect all the required gems and head towards the exit once that quarter is reached. Sometimes it isn't possible to collect every single gem on every single level, but you can see we are given more bonus depending on the time remaining. And even though at this stage you might find that there is little variance in the way of level design, you may be surprised to learn that there are 50 levels in this game spread over 5 worlds. World 1 contains 10 levels, so we'll have to move through those 10 before we see a difference in this background and any variation on these enemies. But you saw a chick in the tree before, that was a variation on the enemies, but the most part, the enemies stay relatively the same throughout these worlds. And so on this world, we only have to concentrate on getting from one side to the other, and we can simply collide with that rope and it will automatically grab on. You know, this is not Robocod, we don't have to press fire and do things to grab onto things, and this is also not another world either. We can't spend time climbing, the aim is just to run, and look at that, hurry up. Do we have enough time? Well, unfortunately not. If we run out of time, unfortunately, just like that, we'll have to collect the last few, and there you go, that's the quota over. So you can see just a few less collisions would have meant we made the end of that level. So, to some degree, the player has to memorise these levels and the order in which to collect these items, and that will mean, surely, an easy ride through them, and if they can't, to get delayed too many times by these collisions, obviously, they will have a tough time. At 
this stage, the level design is fairly linear and the puzzles on offer are very simple and jumping over chasms and using ropes and things like that are very easy and it encourages the player, especially the beginning player who can get very far in this game simply by a little perseverance and again jumping on and off ropes is a doddle and jumping is very fast and the player moves very quickly and responsively indeed. In fact some of the magazine reviewers said that this game was too responsive, too quick for its own good and at this stage well you may be able to see some of that in action but for the main part if you have a great controller then you shouldn't have any problems with this game and it doesn't usually kill the player unfairly. Places are inaccessible and sometimes we'll find trampolines and springs and we can always jump on top of the bear's heads and that will give us some extra height and it's important to do that in order to complete these levels quickly because now we get to the parts where you really must be on the move. See, these bees are giving us a hard time and sometimes we'll find pots of honey which will give us a bonus score and you saw the crack in the floor there leads to an exit from a secret area and you will find secret areas in this game although it is not obvious where they are and it's certainly not as obvious as they were in Robocod but you can find warps and things which travel the player through the game so those are great as long as you know where they are and you will find extra large gems as well which will count towards our gem total but will give us a massive bonus score as well but you can see sometimes the player just has to grin and bear it and carry on independently of all that jump on a spring there and hope and then of all that that they've collected the quota with three seconds to go it doesn't look like I'm going to make it Start the game with three lives and we're given an extra life until we have accumulated 50,000 points which is very stingy indeed. Once again we cannot collect extra lives, power-ups, pickups or consumables one way or the other. So again we'll just have to progress with these very simple game mechanics. I see shades on the trees, a pair of sunshades there which adds a little humour to this game but in general this game is not very humorous particularly when you have to find the exit and remember where that was as soon as you've collected that quota so when the player is running out of time this game is not very funny and when they keep colliding with enemies like that it isn't very funny but sometimes it's quite fun when you reach the exit in just the nick of time and sometimes when you just about fail it isn't very fun at all say I really do like the copper effect in the background which you can see changes on this vertically scrolling very smooth level and all the levels are very smooth and very colourful I certainly cannot comment about the backgrounds but now you can see we have reached a challenge level now we have to reach the end of that thing and reach the goal and the finish line within well <laughs> we only have 10 seconds remaining there and I've wasted most of that trying to get out of this pit if we do get to the finish line we are actually awarded an extra life and you can see we're on zero lives and so that's just another unfortunate aspect in this game but we have got through those 10 levels now we're on world 2 out of 5 and now thankfully we see a different set of backgrounds and a different set of it has to be said very linear and easy levels be surprised to learn that I actually recorded this footage on the 10th of May 2013. Yes, that's over a year ago and this show was originally intended for season one of the Lemon Amiga Play Guide reviews and I thought well it's not such a great game so I pushed that back 
and it's only just about squeezed in to season two. Well, this game is very fast and it's very smooth, and I certainly remember playing this from my Amiga days. And you may notice on the intro, this character was one of the very first to be added to my Amiga intro sequence. So I did have this game in mind for all that time, so I'm glad that I've managed to get around to it. And yet, at the very same time, it is very fast and smooth, it is not an amazingly playable game. But in this section, it gives us a choice now. We can go through four warps, and those will contain crystals, of course. The first one is very easy, and we'll have to accumulate those crystals from these four screens. And that adds some variety to this game. It means we can take on the screens in any order and collect the easiest ones first of all. And we can find that as long as we complete that quota, then the time is pretty lenient and again going from screen to screen is a lot more interesting perhaps and it gives some variety than simply traveling along linear levels but you can see it has not got the same variety as sonic the hedgehog not the same graphics not the same instant charm or playability the control of the character is pretty similar but it isn't the same we can't do loop the loops and roller coaster rides and things like that and again, even though there is some charm in there, there is no comedy when it comes to running out of time and losing your way around these maze-like levels. Sometimes these levels are so easy it's a joke, but sometimes it isn't. And it's those playability factors which unfortunately let this game down. This could have been a great game, but somehow the playability suffers. And the only great thing about it is just making that level in the nick of time. There aren't enough warps and time gates and special features. There are certainly no collectibles and power-ups. And anybody who thought Rainbow Islands was a vertical platformer without much substance, well, at least you could fire rainbows in that vertical platformer, collect items, and have a really great time. In this game, there is no bonuses, no extra lives to pick up, and things like that. And we can't even use the speedy shoes to crash into those enemies at high speed. Although it doesn't appear to save us from doing that because I'm doing just that. So whilst you see me trying to get as far as I can with zero lives there in the bank, I'll just say a little more about this game. It was coded by David Haney and he also provided the music as well, which is a little repetitive. And he was also edited in the code by Nick Frampton. Again, it was their only game on the Amiga. The graphics were created by Laura Graves and again, it's her only graphic attempt on the Amiga. I will also say this game was heavily inspired by Sonic the Hedgehog, and even the aliens are known as Sonic the Hedgehog, spelt backwards. The main enemy is actually Dr. Oriam, and that's Dr. Mario, spelt backwards. And apparently these levels are in the Mega Driver star system. So I think the gamers have definitely taken one or two liberties but maybe not far enough as far as the graphics go and we saw Liquid Kids and Snow Bros were head and shoulders above this game graphically and offered much more. As you can see it's also very frustrating on this level when we forget the gems that we must collect and the fact that the gems count up doesn't help, in fact they should count down. And then we get some idea of how many we need to collect, but there you go. Again, on zero lives, it doesn't help keep falling off these things. And even though the levels are very easy, you'll still see me getting lost on these very easy levels. I haven't played this game before. And you might find that these early levels are very easy, it's a joke. And the later levels take some memorizing, so the player will find some longevity in this game. It's just that the controls, just like that, are so tight and so finicky, sometimes you jump just too far and miss those crystals by pixels. So sometimes it's a little bit too sharp for its own good, and that's one of the criticisms the magazine reviewers leveled at this game. The lowest score I could find was from ACAR magazine, and they gave this 62%. Amiga Format gave this 64%. Amiga Joker gave this 74%, Amiga Action of the One both gave this 78%, Amiga Power and Amiga Computing both gave this 79%, 
And the highest rating comes from CEO Amiga, who gave this game an amazing 84%. Dan Slingsby commented on the secret rooms, the very smooth scrolling and the speed of the main character, although commented on the lack of variety and the difficult control ability. And gives this game an average score of 7.5 out of 10, which actually, for my money, it maybe only deserves maybe a 6 out of 10, basically because of the lack of variety. It feels like a souped-up public domain effort, and I'd certainly expect to see this kind of thing coming from the public domain, not really so much as a full-price game. But we are still persevering, still there with zero lives, and it's another split decision. And again, it's easy and it's a joke, but at the same time, that easiness can make these levels pretty boring. Sometimes the excitement is in the exploring of big levels, and when we are presented with very linear levels like this, it doesn't really encourage the player to progress and to get the most out of this title. Now we find a maze in this very similar level in World 2. The level is quite easy to figure out in general, although it will give the very novice player, like me, some things to think about. Although this level is still easy, still linear in a fashion, and still looks like it's been designed on squared paper. And maybe mathematical chemistry square paper isn't the best medium to design an Amiga game upon. I also think this game has a few redeeming features, mainly the sound effects are quite good, and the music is not annoying, even though that repeats. You know, the most annoying thing is getting the exit open there, being shot down and not having enough time to make it. All that effort and all 16 minutes basically give us the bottom entry of the high score table with 50,000 points. So thank you for viewing another Amiga Play Guide and Review. Maybe this isn't the best game in the entire back catalogue, but it has some charm and it is supposed to be a Sonic Beater on the Amiga. Thank you.